I believe that America's finest hour is still ahead of us, that our greatest stand has not yet happened because we are an opportunity society. We are not a society that believes in redistribution. We are an opportunity society. And if we do what it is that we need to do, all of America will stand up and join this conservative movement and help us not only win elections, but win the hearts of people. Just two months after he was sworn into office, South Carolina's newest Senator Tim Scott speaking at CPAC. Senator Scott joins us. Good evening, sir. Hey, Greta, how are you? I'm very well, and I just spoke to Congressman Alan West, who uh, today said before the crowd that there's nothing liberals fear more than a black American who wants a better life in a smaller <laughs> government. Do you agree with him? Well, I'll tell you what I do agree with. I agree with the fact that in America, you can start as a sing from a single parent household, a kid that doesn't see the future very bright at all, and end up in a place where you can be an entrepreneur, get, elect get appointed to the Senate, get elected to Congress, and, and fulfill your parents and your grandparents' American dream, because in this country, we can unleash our opportunities. So if, in fact, we're talking about the ability to move forward as Americans, there is no brighter place to live on the planet than the United States of America. How do you convince a young child that the future is bright, especially a young child who may be growing up in a family where the, a broken up family where m there is no money and maybe on food stamps, um, the future. Okay. I mean, it's, I imagine it's sort of hard to convince a kid that, that a young kid that the future is bright. S sometimes there, we start off at very difficult places. I think it's so important for us to remind people that it's not where you start, it's the progress that you make along the way. And for me, what I learned along the way was that if you have a, a strong mother, Francis Scott did a really good job of providing me discipline, and then meeting someone who believes in your future and who can excavate the necessary parts and ingredients to your success, that you can fuse those two together and create a very important future, a very bright future. And, and that's what my Chick-fil-A mentor did along with my mother. And I think when you're talking to kids in high schools and in middle schools that feel like the, that the life has passed them by because of difficult situations or circumstances, that you have to stop and walk in their shoes a couple of steps and then talk to them about the fact that no matter the circumstances that surround you, that greatness comes from within. And then when you take it from within, you control your destiny. And that's a very important message and it works. Today at uh, CPAC, you talked about, you, you said something to the fact that Obamacare is an atrocity. And I'm curious, you know, a lot of people won't or never have had insurance or didn't have health care available to them. Obamacare may give that to them. Um, is there, you know, do you still feel it's an atrocity, you know, knowing that for some people this may be their best chance at getting insurance? Well, I think Ronald Reagan made a step in the right direction several years, several, two, couple decades ago when he made sure that people could come into emergency rooms and, and be seen. The question is, how do we control the expense of health insurance? And Obamacare does not do that. What it does, however, is it adds $800 billion of burdens on small business owners and on families, and it breaks the very important link between a patient and a doctor. I talked about how my grandfather at 93 years old, as he grows older and he's a healthy guy, still drives his Ford F-150, I want to make sure that the family makes those decisions. And that's ruined along the way in Obamacare. So it's very important for us to recognize what the legislation does and what it doesn't do. And I would tell you that as we look towards unleashing those opportunities, one of the places that we can unleash opportunities is making sure that we worked on things that expanded the footprint of providing health insurance. And that's not through the federal government. Through the private so, are you, so are you saying that you would like health care available to people, it's just that the way that, the, that Obamacare, for lack of better words, is just not a good way to do it? It's like there are a lot of problems with it. Is that what you're saying? Well, I would certainly say that when you look at the impact of Obamacare, what we'll see here in South Carolina is that a young entrepreneur getting started will see, because of Obamacare, his health insurance rates go up by 61% on average, is what I understand. What we can also recognize is that we'll break that link between a patient and a doctor. So what actually happens is something that may have had some good design as a part of the philosophy has actually, in implementation, caused great concern. It distorts the market. It's not actuarially sound, but it does not help us to provide that real key component to what we're looking for is how do we create more access? You don't create more access through the government. You create more access through the private sector. Senator, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Greta. Now